Uh, good morning, saints. We greet you all today again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Once again, it's a great privilege for us to be gathered here and uh, be connected together in this live broadcast in the fellowship in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So today again, we are thankful to God for having kept us. We are thankful to God for keeping us safe, protecting us against sicknesses, against diseases, against any form of harm during this time. It is amazing how God has kept us through all this time when we, when we hear things happen around us. And, uh, but today we still raise a flag that the promise of God for this time is sure and is certain. And we want to thank God for giving us a heads up of a prophecy in this time so that uh, you and I, saints, wherever we are, would hold on and hide ourselves under the promise of God. Because in every time where we are living, we need to seek for the promise of God in order to know what he's doing in his program and how he would keep us and give us an instruction in his program. So it's very, very important for us to understand the program of God. Now, uh, considering the word of God, it is very important also as the people of God to understand the authority of the word and then to understand the word. You know, in the time that we are living in, we are made to understand it, that the word in scripture also, you find it when you read the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, St. John, you would realize there that it speaks of the way in the beginning was the weight and then the weight there uh, when you take it into uh, uh, other translations or maybe when you take try to go into the etymology of that weight you would realize that it is logos in other instances it speaks of the weight and uh, when you go into that it you, you would find the rima so we need to understand how the word of God works and then to understand how we can test the evil one, uh, the evil preaching one through the word of God and the spirit of God. Because you can't just have the word without the spirit. Because I'm telling you, you, you logic is going to, logic is going to, is going to put you down. It's going to make you fall. Uh, it is the time where revelation is the most important thing than anything. And since I speak every day that uh, the importance of revelation to a true believer by the Spirit of God can never be overemphasized. If you understand what I'm saying, then therefore you would understand the importance of revelation now to realize that God is speaking to us and there are many voices also that are actually uh, uh, spreading across uh, the time, across places and so forth as we speak. But God has his voice now and God has his representatives now. Even though man has his own also or man has made himself a provision way to understand that's why i say to try to understand things of god using logic is the most dangerous things I, I i already shown you when i hear people always wants to you know to explain the great things that god has done for example uh some people try to explain how it how did how was it possible for jonah to enter the belly of a fish 
they tried to find what kind of a fish was that. Was it a whale? Uh, was it a, a shark? What, what kind of a fish was it? Does it even matter what kind of a fish was it? Because the one who was responsible for the journey of Jonah was, was God himself who is the creator. So he made a special fish, which I can call it a submarine that went down in the bottom of the sea and came out uh, uh, with that man safe. So uh, it's a fish that God has made. So if you want to understand how Jonah went into that belly, then your logic is going to crack your mind. So the things of God needs the Spirit of God by revelation so that the child of God may be able to understand. The child of God may be able to grasp it because faith with it, you are able to grasp the things that are spoken to the Spirit. Remember that the, the Bible is a spiritual book. It's not a novel that is written by a mind of man to another mind of man. But the Bible is a spiritual book. It's very important. So now think of it. Uh, many preachers, even young preachers, they just, just like to, to, to make, uh, to also come up with, with something, some things that would itch people's ears. So that when they say something, it would be pleasing to people. But then how is it helping you? How is it helping anybody to have said something that you yourself have concocted in order to ease somebody's mind or to bring a motivation? Now it's time now that we understand that time is against us. The coming of the Lord is so close. You see... Like I was saying that I hear a young man say when he preaches that uh, God took a, a heat out of a fire so that the three Hebrew, Hebrew men uh, would, would walk in the fire without being burned. So obviously, if one does not understand the principle of, of making fire, and then how, how, how is the, fire, the combustion of the fire uh, continues to... Uh, to, 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 to to, con to, to, go to, to, to be flammable, or all the flames and all these kind of things continues without a, a non-stop, is because all elements are there, and one element is heat. The combustion makes heat to make the elements burn. So if we can be able, now, the people who are dealing with fire, if you are a fire extinguisher, you know that uh, they know for every specific fire, there, is, there, should, there, should, there should be a mechanism, mechanism of, of extinguishing that fire. If the fire is of a gas, it would need a particular mechanism to extinguish that particular kind of fire. Because now you need to understand what makes a gas, an explosive gas, when it has caught the fire. And then so that you can, if you understand that, then you, you would be able to find the uh, a way to extinguish, to take a particular element out. You just take one element out and then go to the next in order to extinguish the fire. When it is petrol, you can use water, for example, they will, they will let you know that water would help to transport the, the petrol from one place to another, meaning you are going to make the situation worse. So you need to know how to extinguish a particular fire. So God coming down with three Hebrews was not extinguishing the fire, was coming into the fire. It was a show, a showdown that God has has made for his people uh, who obeyed and, and fully submit in God's word. It was a scripture in the book of Isaiah. You see, if you understand that, you will know how God said he would deliver them in the fire. He would deliver them from the, the mouth of lions. That's the scripture, the promise of God 
is capable when you catch it in the time of, 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 of its happening, in the time of its fulfillment, you catch the promise of God, you are able to survive what kills other people. Think of it. That same fire, these three boys were inoculated. You see, that is the, that is the scriptural way to be. They were immune. They were inoculated. You see, they were in the fire and not bent in the fire. And that fire was fire. Because it was capable of killing the people who brought them, banning them. You, you realize that. So, so, so don't try to make God as though he, he has dodged the fire. No, he didn't dodge the fire. He went right into that fire that is been seven times. You see? So that people understand the importance of the word of God and his power. So what are you going to say about many fishes and many bread? Would you say that God made as if there is a bread? You see, you must understand the miracles that in the scripture is not a magic. It's a done deal. It's a reality. So this is very important and I want to thank God for that. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. Now think of it. We, we're dealing with these things. The reason why it's very important when we deal with these things. To make the people of God understand that the bride of God, which is, hallelujah, the gentle bride, is made out of the weight, not man-made ideologies. It is the bride, she is formed of the weight. The weight forms her. That's why in each and every age, the weight has been molding and forming the weight bride. It was the forming of the weight image. Because you need to understand that the bride becomes the image of the weight. Because she is the wife of the weight. So she is the weight image. She is like Eve, so that when Christ sees the bride, she would say, this is bone of my bone. This is flesh of my flesh. If you want to understand that, you can read it in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. So, so this would help us as the preachers and as the people of God to understand that we will eventually have to come back to the weight. And if we don't do that in time, we will find ourselves struggling when we, when the Bibles have now been declared illegal, where people would not have it or, 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 or have that uh, a legal way to use it as we use publicly. If you do not realize how and where things are going now, you would still be playing around to bring ph uh, ph philosophy. Because at that time, you would realize that people don't need philosophy now. People need a true word of God that is able to quicken the soul and give it uh, oh my life and hope in the time of a pre-persecution. It is called a squeeze. Now, if we don't understand the program of God, we would not even understand that there is what we call a squeeze. So it's very important to understand what we're dealing with now. I'm bringing this because, for example, now we have got a lot of prophecies that are going on now. And now people are taken by confusion. They confuse prophecy. Because people always want to explain prophecy. There's a quotation now. Uh, the, uh, prophet William Brenham, who is a 20th century prophet from God, prophesies about something that is very, very beautiful. He speaks of a vice president in America. Uh, and then he says that she would be wearing uh, a pepper-like uh, cloth uh, 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 clothing. You, you understand that? So, and uh, now, when uh, Hillary Clinton, firstly, uh, was uh, uh, also in the run for a president, they already went out to use the same verse for him. Now, we have Kamala Harris, and these people in a message, I don't know, that's why I told you, brothers, 
We need teachers, proper teachers, to give proper tutorship. So when we have these deacons in the message who have, who have become pastors by circumstances, how are we going to get there? Because they do not even know how to study the Bible. They just know how to read a spoken word and actually uh, say it over and over. They recite it. They parrot the spoken word. They do not have their own burning bush experience with God so that the spoken word is a light that, 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 that quickens them so that when they preach the same mind of the composer and the spirit of the composer is expressed and released to the people that can hear it. And that's the trouble. Because if God don't speak to you, how do you speak to the people of God? This thing I have said many times, but there's coming a time where people will realize why it has been spoken so many times. Now, Kamala Harris was not even wearing purple, was wearing uh, uh, blue, royal blue. If you were not watching TV, you would still look at pictures and say it was purple-like. Number two, in that prophecy says a cruel, uh, a beautiful, but a cruel woman. What did he do, Kamala Harris, to be that cruel? Now, tell me. What did he do? Because you must qualify every, every statement that is spoken in prophecy. But then besides that fact, it is yet to come because now you have to take, remember, do, do, not, do not turn a good prophet of God into a false prophet. Because if that is a big prophecy that must be fulfilled, it must tally with scripture. So if Kamala Harris be the vice president of America that fulfills this particular thing that is coming, or this prophecy, then tell me, brother, it's simple. Which scripture do you quote to qualify that? The prophecy, mind, just don't miss this. The prophecy is sure and true. And I tell him, the prophecies of this particular prophet has never failed. Not one. There's not even one that failed. You, you must understand when we talk about this. So then, tell me here, how is she cruel? What did she do to be cruel? Which scripture does she fulfill? Because if you go into Revelation chapter 13, you would realize it's a system. Like he said, the Roman Catholic Church. That's why you realize that the second beast in the book of Revelation chapter 13 is America. And then that is where it comes. Out there from America. Because every nation in the world is now being led by America. They are influenced by America. Most of the nations are under debts and under the control of America. You can just say it the right way, whether you like it or not, it is. That's how it is. America, America, it is their role model. That's why you see our young people they, they, they just, they just formed in America. They made their role model all this abomination and vomits that comes out of the na that nation. They think it's great. It has brought great men. Uh, wise, intelligent men. Like the one that I was talking about, uh, Elon Musk. Yeah, I know he's born in South Africa, but he's an American. You better believe that. That's why uh, every sponsors are on him. Why? Because he's looking into solutions of the future. That is the most wise and dangerous intelligent man. Now, I'm not against him because he's trying to find solutions, but then the technology that he's bringing in every time, 
<laughs> is bringing about to fulfill the scripture. So if people would un actually understand these things, they would just be careful and now come back to the word and understand that the word is a program. The word uh, has a program. God is busy with something. God is not haphazard. Oh, people of God, I'm trying to, to bring something. When I lay a platform for a message, I'm trying to bring something to you. That God has a program. God is not waking up as that he has a beautiful, wonderful program that you and I must actually buy into. Now, I'm going to show you something that is very, very important here. Now, you can actually bring that prophecy and then say, okay, it's going to fulfill. We believe the prophecy and we believe that it will be fulfilled. Because it's part of the prophecies that has to be fulfilled on the, on the end time. So when the prophet actually brought it, it brought a light to us of Revelation chapter 30. Remember Revelation chapter 30, they say, let us make an image unto the first beast. It, 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 it is a suggestion that came out. And then that image that was made, they enforced, they made sure that they forced everyone. Now they are evil companies. And they are evil governments that forces people into, into doing things that they don't want to do. So if I work for a company and the company forces me to use vaccine, vaccine I, I do not say, and I want you to understand it, and I will not say that, that vaccine is the mark of the beast. It is not. Or vaccine, it is, uh, uh, it is used to whatever the case is. I'm not saying that. But the truth is, no one has to be forced to be injected of that thing. Think of it, I'm already injected of the God vaccine. And I have a proof. I'm healthy as a horse. And that's true. So why, why, why is my company going to force me? To be injected uh, uh, otherwise if i do not have an, a vaccine id then i'm not going to be able to to enter the, the buildings and then uh, 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 and the workplaces what kind of a devilish idea is that now people of god you must understand that democracy is being removed because rem remember when when the beast receive a deadly wound, democracy set in. And now democracy has to go. The freedom of religion must go. Freedom of speech must go. And these things are, are going away because now the governments are forcing people to do certain things that, that they should make choices by themselves. But not being forced by anyone. Now if you read Revelation chapter 13, you'll realize that they will force people you see, they will force people. Now, I saw uh, the pastors uh, that were, were gathering and then they were uh, uh, having a rally. They want, they want back. They want back. They, they just want back to the church. And then uh, they say that the church is also uh, a place of moral support. No, church is not just a place of moral support. Yes, we support people morally. Those who have lost people now. They are under depressed and all this kind of thing. They need God. But think of it, how many people die without God now. Going to hell, you must understand that's the, the, that's the plan of the devil. So that people are not coming to church so that they can be safe. So therefore, they let people to sit home and not go into church. And eventually, people are dying without God, without Christ. It is the plan of the enemy. I don't care if the enemy is using the most richest person in the world or is using our president. It is the plan of the enemy to distract the process. Because he knows that his time is but short. So he's, he's going to use everything. I know that our government wants people to be saved, not be infected and all these kind of things. But also, the Lord also does not want that. And the Lord has, an, has a solution that has no uh, 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 side effects. So that's, that is what is going on now. 
So, so you must understand that when the mark of the beast is fully unleashed, the people will be forced to join in. And those who are not, who are not going to join in, they will be isolated and be cast out. And I'm sorry, many pastors don't want to be cast out. They want to be known in the governments. They want to be known everywhere. They want to appear and be respected. That's the problem. That's why you see on Facebook, they all go out to be respected. They want to win favors of the people. I have God's favor already. And I'm here for your soul. I'm not here for you to favor me. Your soul must be saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, this is what we're dealing with right now. So stop saying that people in a message. You need proper tutorship to understand prophecy. Do not explain prophecy. Let the prophecy be fully fulfilled. Because it is not going to leave an inch of a weight. It's going to happen exactly like it is spoken when it happens. You must remember the scripture in Revelation chapter 17 already tells you of a woman. Are you trying to tell me that that woman on a red scarlet horse with, 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 a, with, with, with a, a, a scarlet garment. You tell me that woman is Kamala Harris? Oh, come on, people in a message. What's wrong with you? I can show you a lot of things that are actually being used here, which is not even scripture. And I was listening to a, 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 I was listening to a, a preacher still saying, oh, the scriptures are being fulfilled. Which scripture, brother? Which scripture is fulfilled? You understand people of God. I'm talking to the people that I lead. To say to you people, this is time to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You're not supposed to be scared at all about this thing that are happening now. Because you should know the process in the program already. So you're not going to, because think of it. What do they do? If the scripture, that scripture has been fulfilled, or maybe if the prophecy has been fulfilled, what do they do? What, how is it going to help the people in the message? Are they going to believe the word better? Are they going to give their lives better to the Lord? Or what, what's going to happen? It seems to have to be proving a particular church right. Or a particular person right. No, man, come on. We are leading the sheep of the Lord. Eh? We are dealing with the bride of Christ. We need to have the sense to understand that if we are the bride, we are the word bride. The weight image, that's what we are forming. That's Christ, what Christ is forming. He's forming the, the weight image. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope that uh, uh, I brought a platform for people to understand what we are dealing with now. I know I took 30 minutes for that. I wanted to do that. Blessed be his holy name. <laughs> oh, glory to God. We're going to read the book of Ezekiel. And... Uh, the, reading the book of Ezekiel, we want to speak here on the wild olive branch. The wild olive branch. We want to continue on the message we preached and we want to go further to try to show you some things here. And then to show you things in the program of God so that we understand. See, when the church started, God started with the, 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 the 12 apostles. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ started with the 12 apostles and he started within Israel. That is the most important thing. He was born within the boundaries of the law. The scripture says in the book of Galatians, he was born within the boundaries of the law. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then he introduced by bringing the dispensation because it was the, the interlace of the new dispensation. It was at the frontier of the new dispensation, which was the dispensation of grace. So now you and I, because we are living at the last age, we are living at the frontier of the coming dispensation of the kingdom. So now we have got dispensations in scripture and we have also uh, uh, ages. Now we have ages within the dispensations. Now the first dispensation which was the dispensation during the, the time where Adam was a prophet of God. It was called the dispensation of innocence. Now, from the dispensation of innocence, a man was born uh, there 
after the fall by the name of Abel, who was supposed to be uh, a prophet of the second dispensation, which is the dispensation of conscience. But then he did not live, live up to be in his own dispensation or to have a message in his own dispensation, but was replaced in the stead of him. Therefore, because he was killed by his brother, uh, uh, by his foster brother, uh, uh, Cain, and then uh, 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 another one was, has, to, has to be born by the name of Seth, which was a resurrection. See, Abel typifies Christ's death uh, by, 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 the, by the seed of the serpent, Cain, and then and Seth uh, typifies the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And therefore, uh, uh, Seth was then now a prophet within the dispensation of conscience. It was the second dispensation. And then we have a prophet in the dispensation of antediluvian, uh, which we call antediluvian age. It was the dispensation, uh, the third dispensation, where with Noah was actually a, a, a prophet, a dispensational prophet thereof. Now we have the fourth dispensation, which is the dispensation of promise, where we find that Abraham was actually here a a dispensational prophet. And I want you to catch that under the dispensations, there are also other prophets which covers the ages in between. They cover the ages in time. So it's a program of God. And therefore, after the dispensation of promise, there came a promise of God to deliver his people and to make a great nation out of them in Egypt. And therefore, there came the dispensation of law, which Moses was a dispensational prophet in the dispensation of law. So therefore, after that, the dispensation of law took over until the dispensation of grace, where the Lord Jesus Christ was a prophet or a major prophet, because all that I'm talking about here is major prophets. And when you talk about major prophets, we're not talking about this major that is spoken here in the local ranks here. That's not a major. Maybe that's a majority. It's not a major. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have a major prophet. We talk about a mouthpiece, a person that speaks to a dispensation. I wish people understand that. So, so a, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ became the prophet of the dispensation of grace because he's the one who turned uh, 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 the corner from the dispensation of law into the dispensation of grace. So the dispensation of grace has been uh, uh, in existence for about 2,000 years now. Now, uh, in this dispensation of grace, uh, we have got ages also, and we have got prophets under dispensation of grace, which we must understand that William Brenham is not a, 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 a dispensational prophet in that line, but was a prophet of an age within the dispensation of grace. And then we can call other reformers and prophets like Paul was not a dispensational prophet, but he was an age prophet, major prophet, but an age prophet within the dispensation of grace, the first one. Agabus was not a, a dispensational prophet, he was a church prophet, a local prophet, Agabus. We have got uh, uh, daughters, four daughters of, of, of Philip that prophesied, which are also prophetess that prophesied within the dispensation of grace but they were church prophetess now i hope we understand that i know it, it's painful for the people because now people are trying to speak against gifts we know gifts may not give you much but gifts are still needed you can't actually say uh, if you have the weight we have everything no you don't have everything you can't have the weight and then lack gifts glory to god i don't want to be excited because i just want to teach today so, so, so you can't have the weight without gifts. You can't, can't, come on, man. You've been lying to your children for quite a long time. So you're not going to lie to people of God with the light of the age. So therefore, we are now waiting again for a dispensational prophet that takes over the dispensation of the kingdom. It happens to be the same again. The Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> but now I want you to understand... He is, because that is his age, that is his time. He has to take it up again. But now he's going to use Moses and Elijah 
to do the work for him in his own dispensation. Now, the dispensation of the dispensation of the kingdom is actually going to be a millennium. But before that, he must have two anointed ones to run before him. The two anointed ones that we spoke about in the book of, 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 of Zechariah. It's Moses and Elijah. You find them in the book of Zechariah. You also find them in the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. So you can actually, it didn't say Moses and Elijah in the book of Revelation, but it tells you uh, what they are going to do. So it will tell you what they did in their ministries. And therefore you see the character, you see their personality, you see their ways, you know, of ministry, which now becomes a solution at the time. You see, you think you have seen much, you think you have seen uh, pestilences, they are coming. This is not even a pestilence. Now, it is shocking the Christians, shocking the people now, this pestilence. But I tell you, there are seven pestilences that are coming. Worse more than Corona. And still, the people are not going to be saved. So therefore, we're not going to force people to be saved when they see Corona killing people. No. We are going to tell those who believe they are saved to repent. And hold on and come back to the word. We are telling those who are born again to be born again. We are telling those who say we have received Christ to now truly receive Christ. To move from the stage of lukewarmness into a state of a real born again Christian. Now they say they are saved. They can't even speak in tongues. What's wrong with you? You can't speak in tongues. You can't even have the least of them. A tongue is not only a gift. It's also something, a sign that must follow you. You, you must understand if you miss it from following, you must get it as a gift. If you don't get it as a gift, it must come from by following. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. The only one that everybody wants to do is to lay hands on the sick. <laughs> you know why? Because they want to take authority of saying, I healed someone. Let me just tell you something. You take, you lay hands on the sick. That's your responsibility. Then the Lord will heal them. Maybe we need to understand it that way so that people may understand what we're dealing with here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's read the book of Ezekiel chapter 34 from verses 11. And then so that we can talk about this, this is very important. Uh, we're talking about a wild olive branch. The wild olive branch is the bride of the Gentile, which is the bride of Christ. That in the program of God, before the foundation of the world, she was there. She was the most precious thing to, thing to, to God. Oh my. <laughs> She's the woman that the Lord is speaking about in the book of Songs of Solomon. And she is the beloved of Christ. You know, think of it. Uh, uh, how, how God brought, brought the nation of Israel and then produced the Messiah through He preserved it so that He can bring forth the Messiah. And therefore the Messiah must now go out for, for His own bride because He must build His church. And after building his church, he's going to fuse them together to make one fold and one shepherd. So this is the most beautiful thing that one must actually understand that has been happening all along. And then we're going to be, be going through that. Now, uh, the book of Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, verses 11, this is beautiful. It says, Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, glory to God. Oh God, I, I like it. Oh my. Will both search my sheep and seek them out. You, you realize that religion is people searching for God out. <laughs> but Christianity is God searching for his people out. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, so God here, we're not seeking for him. Hallelujah. You see, because man can't find God. The scripture says, seek for him when, uh, uh, when he is found. <laughs> it's because he has already told you where he is. It's not as though that you seek for him. He's the one seeking for you. So all what you need to do is to ensure that it is him that you have found. Now, God is seeking for his sheep. Seek them out. Now, he says, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the days that he is among his sheep, 
that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Now, I want you to understand, it is in a cloudy and dark day. It happened. And it is still going to happen. You must understand that how it has to happen. Remember that the Israelites, by Titus, during the time that Jesus spoke and prophesied in Matthew chapter 24, that uh, their flight would, should be, should, should not, they should pray that their flight is not in winter or uh, in the Sabbath day. So that prophecy happened and then they were scattered across the world. Now, uh, uh, think of it. In the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, 2, where if you read down there, you realize that God is bringing them back and it is 12 tribes. And people are asking themselves, I know the seven days Adventists are like the scripture. And then uh, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses also like the scripture. They call themselves those people. I don't understand how are you born in South Africa and you are born in... Uh, in Botsavelo and uh, Blue Container or Belcom or Jobek and Cape Town and you are born here by a black person or a white person for that matter or an Indian for that matter however you are born you think after you are born again and you have been doing all your gentle thing worshiping all your gods and idols and uh, 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 ancestors you now turn around to be the 144,000. You should be a, you are a joke. You are a joke. That's why you don't want to listen to the voice of Christ for this time. Because if you would listen to the voice of Christ, you would understand that it's not you. The bride is not them. They are called the servants. Remember, they did not come to be the children of God. They were servants of God. We are those whom children were introduced. Glory to God. You see, when the Lord Jesus came to us, he introduced us as children. He says, them that receive him are given the right, the permission to be called the children of God, the sons of God. The Israelites, though they were chosen a nation of God, they were called the people of God. They were called the servants of our God, but they were never called the children of God. So you need to understand what's going on here. Glory to God. So therefore, God is going to bring them back. How is he going to bring them back? Just like he brought a virgin child. He's going to bring all of them back by blood and DNA. And I can show you that these people, when they go back into their land, because now every Israelite, wherever they are, they are actually giving a man a particular fund to their nation. That's why their nation is so prosperous, because God spoke. You must understand that everyone who de denied the Lord Jesus Christ, he denies that the, there is a nation called Palestine, called Israel, called Jerusalem. Wake up for your redemption is drawing now. It is here. You can check it on a map. Glory to God. You can check all the places as God has delivered and then shared that particular space to them accordingly. It's a hard place, mountainous and all those kind of things. But I tell you, everyone wants it. They fight for it. They are hated of all nations. But I tell you, 1948, God, by the hands of Mussolini, Stalin, and Hitler, God brought them back and then they became a nation. Amen. But now remember, not all of them returned then. Now they are returning. Because remember, when this was happening on this other side, when the trumpets are blowing out, now, the seventh seal was actually coming and uh, uh, to be open uh, uh, this side of us, the Gentiles. And then when God was bringing about his word, also the trumpet sounded on another side. And then uh, Israel became a nation to fulfill a scripture. But you must understand that it was not all of them. The 12 tribes must come back. The Lord, the scripture says, they are, it is in a dark, a cloudy and a dark day. 
That's why we have seen the Holocaust. The people who understand the Holocaust will understand how dangerous and how deep and how horrible the experienced people has gone through. You think you have gone through apartheid and then it was dangerous, it was bad. I understand that. It was bad, but have you gone through the Holocaust and understand what you're talking about? It is not half. What we have experienced in South Africa is not half what those people of God experienced. They died horribly. In the hands of a man who thought he got it. Because he thought he was destroying the Antichrist. Hitler was saying these people are Antichrist. He didn't understand. That's why the scripture says, do not boost. Lest you be cut off. So he was boosting. Trying to, to persecute the people of God. Not knowing that the scripture has been fulfilled. So God said he will bring them back. Now he's talking to the Israelites here. But if you listen closely. You will understand that he's going to show you that though he's speaking about Israel, he is hiding someone there. Glory to God. Oh my. Okay, let's, let's be further. He says, he said, in. and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land. Now, I want you to understand, I will bring them to their own land. We all understand that. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers hallelujah and in all inhabited places of the country now his specific country Israel land and so he's specific amen God is going to bring them back hallelujah but God must also bring you and I back to our land to our inheritance glory to God now you have to find because this is a shadow uh, Israel becomes a shadow of, of the, the anti-type, the reality. So we're with you and I, which are spiritual Israel, are the reality of that shadow. So where is our land? What is your God? Where is our promise? Who is our... Oh my. Where is the land? What is the promise? Glory to God. The promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Our land and inheritance restored to us. Pentecost. Glory to God. Brother, sister, I tell you, you may take the Bible and try to read it and feed yourself with it. Unless Pentecost becomes your experience, you are still a religious person. And you do not have a land and a promise. Glory to God. It has come to a time where you and I must begin to understand that it is time. It is time for us to realize where we are. Because it is the closing of time now and the Lord is returning back to the Jews. He is going back to his own people, the natural branch of the original tree. You and I are crafted. We are a wild olive crafted. But God is going back to his own people. And you and I must be ready when that moment, oh hallelujah, when that moment happens. Glory to God. There are certain things when I was going through this yesterday that really shocked my heart. That, oh hallelujah, that, that pinched my heart, brought an an awakening, oh glory to God, I wish we can be awakened, uh, every one of us who is listening right now, listen to this, what did he say, he says that he's going to bring them out, amen, to the county, verse 13, verse 14, I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel, shall their fold be, now listen to this, their fold will be where, in a mountain of Israel, people don't understand, whatever happens now in history, Amen. In the politics and in religion. You must check there are three things. Amen. All these things are actually happening. They show it's technology, civilization, history, uh, politics, and religion. All these three things, they bring about the fulfillment of scripture. Amen. So you and I are going to see it alive in this hour. We are going to see some things happen. That's why Paul says we shall not all die. Hallelujah. But we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkle of an eye. At the last trumpet. Now he says at the last trumpet. Not at the last seal. Glory to God. I wish you understand that. Now I, I, I'm bringing this so that I can actually cut across. So that I don't read many scriptures now. He says at the last trumpet. Not the last seal. I want you to get it. Because... The seventh trumpet is to the Israel what the seventh seal is to the bride. Now, let me just put it this way. The seventh trumpet 
is to the original olive tree what the seventh seal is to the wild olive branch. So it is the seven seals that are now revealed and is being fulfilled to the wild olive while the trumpets are being fulfilled to do to cater for the time of who? To cater for the time of the original olive. Because God must go them and restore the branch. Hallelujah. Let's read the scripture quickly because one would be excited when you read the scripture. Oh, glory to God. I wish I can have the whole day to preach this whole thing. Amen. I tell you, I can take it up. Oh, glory to God. If people can be awake, not sleep at the time. But then let's trust God on this one. Listen to what he says. Amen. Amen. I will feed them. 14. I will feed them in good pasture upon the high mountains of Israel. Shall their fold be. They shall, they shall they lie in good fold. And in a fed pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Now listen to this. I will feed my flock. And I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. If it is thus, saith the Lord, you must know whether you like it or not, whether you pray against it or you pray for it, it don't matter, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. I will seek that which was lost. Are you getting that? Now, he's not seeking for something new that he does not know. Now, we need to understand that, people of God, because now I'm talking about the olive, wild olive tree, olive branch, and the original branch now. You need to understand that, that God is not seeking what he did not lose. Now, did God really lose them? No, they are lost, but God knows them by name and wherever they are and is bringing them back. Something that is lost was in the, in the original hands of the owner. If you have lost 50 rand, you can't go look for 10 rand. That's not what you lost. If you find 10 rent, you will not be satisfied and say, oh, I found it. No, you didn't lose 10 rent. You lost 50 rent. You are going to look for what you lost. Are you getting what I'm talking about? My example helping, if it's helping, the Lord bless you. Listen to this. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to know to lie down, say the Lord. Now he says here, amen. Hallelujah. I will seek that which was lost and will bring again, say again. You see, it's again because he has done it first. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It happens twice. The Second World War brought it about. The First and Second World War actually brought it about. And now the Third World War is going to bring it about. The Third World War, let's tell you we Christian. Amen. You would like to be a Christian. This is the time to become a Christian. The next time. It is Armageddon. It is spoken in the scriptures Armageddon. It's happening. It's going to happen. Whether you like it or not. There is a horrible war coming. But somehow, so, so, so I help you out. We won't be here when it happens. No, we're not going to be dead. Mm -mm. We'll be alive, but not here. We'll be having the hallelujahs and the wonderful glories. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the house of the Father in heaven. Oh, glory to God. You know what I like? I'm going to taste heaven at least. Even if it was for a space of a time. About a space of three and a half years and so forth. But it will be like eternity. Why? Because my body would have changed, transformed. Amen. In a twinkle of an eye and be like the glorified body of my Lord Jesus Christ. So it will be like eternity. Because when God brings us back to earth, it will because now he's going to bring us back to earth. We're not going to live in heaven. No, we are creatures of the earth. But then he's going to bring us back to earth to live here on earth. So therefore, heaven and earth are going to be together. They are going to be united. How are they going to be united? They are going to be united by the new Jerusalem. It will be a uniting portion of, 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 on earth that, that, that unites or brings together or joins together the heaven and earth. And you know what I like? The throne of God and of the Lamb will be there. Not in heaven, glory to you. But it's heaven on earth. If anybody wants heaven on earth, that's it. You're not going to miss that. Amen. So you want me to try to enjoy this nonsensical uh, uh, life here on earth? I would rather suffer this life on earth 
and have nothing because there is eternity waiting for me with everything. Oh, glory to God. Oh, my goodness. This subject is too much for me. I can't even move an inch of it. Now, let's, let's go for, for forth quickly because now I must come and give you quotations. Now, listen to what he says. He says he's going to bring them. Amen. Listen to this. He says again and bring again that which was driven away. You understand that? Who drove it away? Is Titus. Amen. The devil used Titus to do that. So it was still in the program. It's not something that happened hey, by chance. Hey, there was uh, Titus. Is, no, no. We are in a program, people of God. Listen to that. Amen. And I will, uh, those that are driven away, and I will bind up that which was broken. We know that the original branch was broken. So that's why he has to what? To bind it up. That's why you will see the same scripture in the book of Hosea. Uh, chapter 6 says, come let us reason together. He's going to do what? He's going to bind them. He's going to heal them. Oh my. He was talking to who? To his own people. Amen. And, and oh my. And he included the bride. I want you to catch that. He included the bride in the book of Hosea. Now, the wild olive also. Now, listen to what he says. Oh, that which was broken, and I will strengthen that which was sick, but I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will feed them with judgment. Now, you remember we spoke to say that Jesus Christ came to declare the acceptability of the Lord because the wild olive must come within the time of the acceptability of the Lord. Now, and he says, the day of vengeance, it is actually the judgment that scripture is speaking of here, which the Lord actually is bringing up. is the day of uh, a vengeance. This is when uh, the day or the time or the acceptability of the Lord ends, which is the time of the dispensation of grace. When it ends, God brings and this is what comes. Most of their ministry speaks of judgment. But anyhow, the Israelites understand it. But the rest of the earth don't understand it. And for you, O oh my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between the cattle and the cattle. I want you to catch that. He's judging between what? The cattle and the cattle. <laughs> Oh, between the ram and the he goats. If you look at the ram and the he goats, they look alike. But then, amen. A, a seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet and as for my flock they eat that which have trodden with their feet and they drink that which has fouled with their feet thus therefore thus saith the lord god unto them behold i even i will judge between the cattle and between the lean cattle are you getting that all the scriptures are becoming clear. Because ye have thrust with sight and with shoulder and have pushed all the diseased, the deceased, with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Are you seeing it? Therefore I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. <laughs> they will hate Israel. Like a lot of political parties in South Africa, they hate Israel. I wish they knew. Because they are not making it easy for us. That's why this country has become the whole uh, 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 cursed country above, above all countries of Africa. You can see how this uh, 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 disease of, of, of COVID-19 is hitting South Africa. More than any country. And it is the smallest of them all. It's finishing them. Because they are clever. They don't even understand spiritual politics. Because you can't go into politics understanding ANC only. Or Freedom Charter only. You must learn more in politics. There's much bigger. Meat you can learn more. So that you cannot tremble on things. 
That is of God because God is going to be coming for you. And listen to me, people of South Africa. God is coming for you. Unless you repent, God is coming for you. You can't play with the people of God like that and you think you're going you, you gonna, to you gonna just go away with me that God is not going to allow it. He is a faithful avenger for each and every pain they, they have caused these people. God is coming and God will avenge his people and he's going to avenge us speedily. He's going to even avenge Israel that all these people are speaking bad about and are ridiculing when they did nothing wrong. Glory to God. Help us, God. Hallelujah. Now, listen to what he's saying. He says he's going to, he's going to bring his own cattle. He's going to save them, his flock. And he's, he, 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 they shall no more be a prey. Amen. Verse 23. I will, sh I will set up one shepherd over them. Now, do you see? I will set up what? One shepherd over them. And he shall feed them. Even my servant David. He shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. How do you understand? He says, my servant David. Now, oh, David, how is that going to happen? Let me just tell you, you must read the book of Luke chapter 1. How is it going to happen? Because God said, what did he say? He shall do what? He shall ensure that the throne of, of David will what? Will be sustained forever. Hallelujah. So, but his son will actually take the throne of his father. Glory to God. The throne of his father. So the throne that the Lord Jesus Christ is actually going to sit on, which is in the millennium, a ruling the Israelites, is actually the throne of his father. It's the throne of David. That's why David is spoken of here. So, oh my, it's just much of a teaching here, but then let's go over the subject. We will break it as we go along. So a prince among them. Now, David was not a prince. He was a king. Now, let me just read this verse so that we can understand. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken it. Now, I want you to understand. David was not a prince, was a king. So he says, if my servant David will be a prince among them, it, it will tell you that the one that comes is actually the son of David, who is a prince. And we know it's not Solomon. Oh my. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. I will make with them a covenant of peace, and I will cause the evil beast to cease. Which is the, who is the evil beast? Revelation chapter 13. He will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness. Now, why? In the wilderness. And sleep in the woods. We know, we call it uh, a feast of booths. The feast of tabernacle. Which will be in the millennium. So therefore, let's not just go there. And I will make them and the places about my heel, a blessing, and I will cause the showers to come in season. There shall be showers of blessings. Amen. And the tree of the field shall, uh, shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be saved in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of the yoke, and, and deliver them out of the hand of those that saved themselves of them. Now, they shall no more be a prey to the hidden. What do you get there? Neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Glory to God. And I will rise up for them a plant of renown. Listen to this. And they shall no more consume, uh, uh, no more be consumed with hunger. In the land, neither be ashamed of the hidden anymore. Oh, God is speaking for them. Amen. Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them. And they, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people with the Lord God. 
That saith the Lord God. Ye my flock, the flock of my pastor, are made. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. Now, that is a beautiful scripture. And I want us to read quickly uh, a scripture in the book. Amen. I'm going to take the scripture here quickly. Uh, the Lord speaks in the, in the book of John. I want you to realize that when the speech, uh, scripture speaks here, the Lord speaks to uh, the woman of Samaria at the well. He tells her hey, this particular kind of thing. She, it's, it's actually John chapter 4 verse 22. He says here, Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. I want you to understand the book of Romans chapter 9 tells us the same. That the promises and all this kind belongs to them. Now I want us to read it so that we can actually have a clear understanding of what, what we're dealing with here. Amen. The book of Romans chapter 9, Paul's telling us the same here. So listen to what he says. Verse, verse 3 and 4. He says, For I wish, I, I, so for I could wish that myself be accursed from, from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israel, Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and of the covenants and the giving of law and services of God and the promises. This pattern to them belongs to them. The word pattern means belongs to them. Like Jesus is saying here, salvation belongs, is of the Jews. All these promises are spoken to Israel or Israelites. So when by faith you are called by the word of God, Within the, the era of the wild olive branch, you become a child of Abraham by faith. Therefore, not necessarily a natural by flesh, but spiritually by faith. Hence, there must be a birth in this thing. You don't join a church. You have to be born anew. You must be born anew. You, you, it's a matter of a birth and a DNA here. Which the Israelites also must come into it. Are called into it. Hence the Holy Spirit comes to do what? To confirm the birth. Glory to God. This is how it happens. You, it belongs to them. So you... You, you are born to become a, a, an Israelite, a child of Abraham by faith. So the white olive comes by birth too. You must get it that the wild olive branch comes by birth. It's crafted. But there must be a birth that connects the branch to a tree so that the life of the tree from the roots may give its fatness and benefits into the branch so that the branch can bring forth fruit of that tree. That's why you look at us, you don't understand, you think we are Jews. No, we're not Jews. We are the children of God. For when God chose Abraham, he was not choosing the Jews. Because Abraham was a Gentile, was just a heathen. But God chose him by the same choice that he had hereby chose Abraham, we also, the, the wild olive, are crafted in and are chosen by God's election will. Amen. And we come and become the children of Abraham by faith. Glory to God. We don't join the church. It's a birth matter. Oh, hallelujah. What he says, he says all these things belong to them. Amen. I want us to read the book of Luke. Luke chapter 19 from 9, 10. Look what he's saying here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's see what Luke says. And Jesus says unto him, This day is salvation come to thy house. For so much as he is also a son of Abraham. I want you to get there. A son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
He is quoting the very scripture that we just read now. Amen. Is that right? He is quoting the same scripture of, 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 of Ezekiel. What is he telling you? That Zacchaeus as the lost son who lived in a way in his business, but in his spirit, in his heart, he was every time convicted for the things he has done. Just like the woman of Samaria. Among all the Samaritans, the Lord just had to go to her because all her life she has been seeking for the one that has a true solution for, his, his, uh, for her trouble. And Jesus came, the son of man, the prophet, to come and to seek and save that which was lost. By bringing a Samaritan over, the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us that, oh, hallelujah, the wild olive, amen, is being crafted in. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we read also the scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. And then now you can read it even further than uh, Galatians uh, 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 chapter 3. Oh, goodness. You see when I teach that, I have a problem now because time just fly. I don't understand what's wrong with time. Amen. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. <laughs> Amen. When God spoke to Abraham, I remember he said, can you look at the ascent of the sea? Can you count it? And Abraham said, no, I can't. He says, your children shall be as the ascent of the sea. Now he was referring to uh, Abraham's children by the flesh. Then he said, look at the stars. Hallelujah. And Abraham looked at the stars and said, count them. He says, the, the, your, your seed shall be as the, as the stars of heaven. Now he was talking to what? The children of Abraham by his spirit. What is he referring to? He's referring to you and I. Glory to God, the wild olive. Now we look into the original branch, the scent of the sea, and the stars, the, 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 the wild olive that is cut in to be part of the same. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the scripture foreseeing that. Now I want you to see what the, what, what, how Paul puts it here. He says the scripture foreseeing. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Don't make a prophet a false prophet. Check how the scripture is fulfilled. It's foreseeing. And then when that it happens, it confirms it. The scripture foresees it and confirms it. So now, if you talk about Kamala, Kamala Harris and so forth, confirm by scripture. Don't just say prophecies will be confirmed by scripture. Because I tell you what now, if I take the same prophecy, I'm going to give you a prophecy and I'm going to give you the scripture it fulfills. It's in the scripture. So that you understand that when you talk about a, an aged prophet within the dispensation of grace, it was, he was a prophet. It was the first messenger who was a prophet and the last messenger. The, them that were within were, were reformers. But Christianity is not to reform, but it's to transform. That's why we are expecting transformation now. Hence, we speak of the two things. The inoculation of the believers now and the divine healing. When the believers must introduce to the world divine healing. And mostly to many believers who are caught by COVID-19. A sister asked us to pray for a person who was in, in the IC, ICU. An old person that was, that was infected of the, the COVID-19. Uh, she was taken to IC, ICU and then she was in the most horrible state. And then we came together with a prayer warrior team and we brought the case to the Lord an hour later, they took him to they took her out of the ICU. Stable. Glory to God. And I tell you right now, she's out. Why? Of the hospital. Why? Because God cannot lie. His promises are sure. His messages are new every morning. Glory to God. Amen. The fresh anointing every day. Refreshing your soul. That same word that was promised for this time went straight into the bed where the lady was lying. Hallelujah. In the ICU. And the glory of the Lord overshadowed her. And the power of the Holy Spirit took her out 
took the demon out. Amen. And the sickness, amen, away. And the person stabilized immediately. For this is a sure promise and a truth. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what we have to tell the world. That a divine healing is a reality and it's true. It was brought as a sign. Why? To tell us that the same power of God can bring a transformation in the lives of this flesh. For flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither this corruption can inherit incorruption. But there shall come a time of the changing of the body. Brother, we are going home. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Oh, the queen must meet with the king. This is time. The wild olive is bringing about. It has come to an end. Hallelujah. Where the wild olive shall, be, shall, shall come to a fulfillment. That their number and the last of them is come and has received the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, this is their time of the going home. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. It is not just a say. It is a true. So when God, if you want to see, you must see the antitype. And then you see the type and the antitype. You see the Israelites because they, they are our watch, uh, our, our time watch. Amen. If we want to know what's going on, we don't look at what goes on in America. We look at what goes on in Israel. So America is not our timeline. People in the message, please wake up. For your redemption is drawing nigh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Lord is saying here. In the book of Galatians. We said, we'll read from uh, uh, till verse 7. It says, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Amen. And the scripture foreseeing that, God would justify the hidden through faith. Are you getting that? Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed, including the wild olive branch. Is blessed in Abraham. But how are you going to be blessed in Abraham? You must be crafted in. Amen. By what? By faith in God's word. Not by faith in human intelligence. People are, you know, people are ahead. Né? You can just check their status and so forth when they speak. Speaking against the brother. It's because the pastors are teaching them. They will tell you about your car, how it's nice, and how people are going to hate you for it. Think of it. In the time that we're living in. When are supposed to tell the people that this is homegoing time? See, I can't. Evangelist Naki, we're going home, brother. We need evangelists now to tell people it's, an, it's a homegoing time. And, the, and, 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 and believe me, this time is not delaying. It is shortened. Instead, it is shortened. I hope people understand. Think of it. Elon Musk, when they look at the rate in which civilization would come for them to go to the, uh, uh, not the moon, rather, Mars, it would have taken about 50 years from now up until 100 years between that. But I tell you, the manner in which Elon Musk is so intelligent, by 2025, they are hoping to go to, the, to Mars. Now, he has already come up with the facility. He has come up with the transportation, everything. They have realized that Mars don't have the atmosphere. And now, they want to create an atmosphere in Mars. There is actually water, but now it's, it's ice that is covered. Just like the Earth was. So therefore, they are going to create an atmosphere. They want to create an atmosphere so that the water may actually come from within and water. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. When I look at that, I realize that, oh, people are not just aware of what is going on here. Science is so fast. But check the scripture. 
you will realize that's, that, that, that is what the scriptures told us. Oh, goodness gracious me. When the Christians are become dumber and dumber, they are sleeping and slumbering. They do not know their scripture, their promises. They do not know of how will you inherit their promise if you don't know about it. Many Christians die without knowing their promises. Oh, God help us. Can you wake your people up? Please, and let them call. Bring about, hallelujah, servants, Lord. Bring about steward, please, Lord. That will tell this world that the time is up. The world's time is up. Oh, my. Oh, my. God, come for us. We don't want to have uh, 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 um, uh, an ID vaccine certificate and so forth. Oh, we don't want that, Lord. Please help us. Amen. Amen. What is he saying? He says, so then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Are you seeing that? You see, how, do we, how are we crafted? How are we brought in by the same one thing that pleases God and by faith? Now, let me just go quickly here and then read this for you. Let me just read this for you quickly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have less time, but I'm, I'm going to try to use them, to use it wisely so that I can do that. I didn't actually say much. I'm trying to bring the scripture so that every one of us is understanding what we are dealing with. It is our store, saith the Lord. 1954 or 829. Afternoon. Listen to this. He is speaking here of a tree. And God always likened his people to a tree. As the life of a tree, so will my people be. That's the, that, that, that is the, the scripture. That is the scripture of Zechariah. Now, now and the Jews was considered the tame olive tree, meaning the original one. The tame, when you say tame is two, there's, the one is wild, the other one is tame. Now we're trying to, to use the, uh, uh, the language to separate the two. A tame olive tree. And the Gentile, the wild olive tree. And I believe in Zechariah, where they were, they, the wild olive tree was crafted into the tame olive tree. And Paul spoke in Romans and so forth about the same thing of the different olive trees and their work. That is when God wants to bring these things together. Amen. It says here in Jehovah Jireh, 17 paragraph there. But we find out in the New Testament that the Gentile the Gentile church was crafted in. Have you given that? They are the wild olive tree of Ezekiel. And they were crafted in. And Paul tells us that which, that which is outwardly is not the Jews, but that which is inwardly is Abraham's seed. Are you getting that? Now, what we are trying to have to show you by the prophet here that how the wild and the tame comes together to form one, one tree. Amen. We have been dead in Christ. We take on Abraham's seed and our heirs together according to the promise. Now, the reason that we are called Abraham's seed it's because that Abraham's seed physically was speaking on to Isaac. Amen? And Isaac on to Christ. And Christ came and gave his life a ransom for us. And sent the Holy Spirit back which gives us the faith that Abraham had before he was circumcised. Are you getting that? Abraham had faith before circumcision. Now, he says the Holy Spirit came to do what? Send what? The Holy Spirit, what? Christ. Send the Holy Spirit 
back, which gave us the faith. Now, all oh, people of God, we can't, you can't get the Holy Spirit of yourself. The Holy Spirit comes by the order of Christ, and which is a Pentecostal order of a promise spoken. You can't deny it. Because if that's how you receive the Holy Spirit, signs follows you. Number one. Number two, a promise is unto you, your children, and then that are far as many as the Lord of God shall call. So we can't be in a message, or we can't claim to be saved and born again, and then deny the gifts. We do not say that we should focus or major on gifts, but we say if we are of the word and are majoring on the word, and the word is in us, and we are the image of the word, or the produce of the weight, the sign shall follow us too. You can't have the weight without the sign following you. You can do whatever you like. It won't happen. If somebody lied to you, a preacher or somebody, just run for your life now because that man does not care for your soul. He cares for your membership. That's what makes me, you see, what hurts me more. You see, people can do whatever they do, but what hurts me more is to see the people that I taught a true, proper teaching fall away for nonsensical things, which is man's ideology and man's understanding when Christ has opened himself to us like this. It's painful, people of God. It's painful. But I tell you, there's coming a time when you'll understand why you encountered me. So that when you are in the tribulation, you will remember that I have been saying much. A proper teaching or a proper thought that just places you positionally in Christ. So if the message of the hour has turned to your heart, has turned to your heart, your faith is positionally placed right within God's program. You have the promise of God. You are restored to your inheritance and to your possession. You have heard and have been re oh my, released by a jubilee trumpet of Revelation 10, 7. Glory to God. What is he saying? Amen. Amen. Before the circumcision. Abraham believed God. You need to understand. So circumcision was actually a confirmation of his faith to God by the Holy Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. So he believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And God gave him a sign of circumcision as a confirmation of his recognition of his faith. Are you seeing that? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What is he saying? What I'm talking about now, this is What is he saying? So now, if the first tree was holy, its branches holy, the original tree, now listen to this, and because they disbelieve the Pentecostal message, now, can I, can I repeat this? And I'm going to go slowly of this quote. Laodicean Church Age, paragraph 271. If the people in the message think that I'm crazy, now, listen to this one and understand how serious this is. There is no way you can believe the message and have the revelation of it without Pentecostal experience, I tell you. Please, pastor, brother, preacher, whatever you are called, stop lying to your people and to yourself. Start doing something now. Or otherwise, you will understand it in the tribulation. Now, now, he says, if the first tree was holy, the branches holy, the original tree, and because they disbelieved the Pentecostal message that Paul was preaching, is that so? God cut them off and took a wild olive tree, which was the Gentiles' ass. And crafted us in that 
we might leave of the branch or of the original tree, the substance of the tree. <laughs> now, how much more in this day when we are rejecting the Pentecostal message? Goodness. That comes down through the church ages. How much more is God able to take that old wild tree off of it? Anyhow, let the other one come in because he will reject it because of unbelief. Now, dovetail that with the lesson this morning. You know where we are standing now. Don't you? We are, the, we are at the end time. For the taking away of the Gentile church. The rapture for it. And the issuing of the Holy Ghost. To come upon the Jews. And Jesus to make himself known. Oh my. To seal the 144,000. Revelation 7, 7 verse 1 and 2, 3 and all that. Listen to this. Amen. There you are bringing back the original tree. Back into the blessing. Into Israel again. Am I crazy people? Oh my. It has been the Holy Ghost all the time. Trying to tell us. Do not reject the Pentecostal message. Where we speak in tongues. We prophesy. We have all our gifts and miracles. Miraculous are following us. Why? Because it's God's promise. It's God's given inheritance. Oh my, it's God's given right. If I talk about it and want it this way, mentally mindsets must be, must be changed and be brought back so that we can come to the understanding the need of the Pentecostal experience. When our mind is rightly set, we will physically now experience this particular experience of Pentecost. And I tell you, when your mind is not rightfully said, learn and unlearn, you are not going to experience Pentecostal experience. You're not going to get it. Oh my. I'm finishing this up. I'm finishing this up. Uh, forgive me. I'm going to ask for five minutes if you can allow me. Five minutes of uh, African, five minutes. Amen. <laughs> so, so that I can just go through these quotations and give you there. Now, listen to this. We were contrary to nature, alien, without mercy, without God, with no hope at all. And God by his mercy, now what is this? This is the sixfold purpose of Gabriel's visit to Daniel. Amen. Amen. What is he saying? Alienated, with no hope, with, with no God, with no hope at all. And God by his mercy, to give us a chance, cut off Russia's Israel because of transgressions. And tent them aside. The tame olive tree. And brought in a wild olive tree. Contrary to nature. Oh glory to God. Contrary to nature. This is a miracle. This is, this is a paradox. Glory to God. And to good tree. Hallelujah. How much more shall this. Which be their natural branches. Be crafted into their own olive. Olive tree. All right, let's read. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part of the Israel, or uh, in part of hap uh, that happened to of, of Israel, happens to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. You see, it's the book of Romans. Until God is finished with the Gentile, Israel was blinded. They went off into sin and to transgression against God because God blinded their eyes that we might be crafted in. You get it now, congregation? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. The seventh seal. Oh my, you can't just go without going to the seal so that people must understand that we're talking the seventh seal. This is mostly we have been dealing with the first seal big time. But then uh, you get it, brother. What is he saying? But the age is coming when the Gentiles will be done away with. Amen. 
there is a tree and the roots was Jewish. Amen. And it was cut off and the Gentiles was cut at in the wild olive tree and is bringing forth its fruit. Now, when the Gentile bride is cut off, the bride tree is talked about and is taking what? The bride tree, remember that? What is it? It's a Gentile bride tree. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is he saying here? A bright tree uh, 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 I talk about is taken up in the presence of God. God will wipe off them unbelieving Gentiles over here to the side. The sleeping virgin and craft again the promised as he promised to do. What is he going to do? He's going to try to craft them in again, the Jews. And until that time, you just have to know where you are. If you know where you are going well, all right. If you don't know why you are stumbling in darkness. Why are you stumbling in darkness? The prophet is asking. Now, 126. Now, that's when the Jews will be converted. During that age. Now, like the church age, under the power of the anointed promise, they will receive Christ. But now, not while the Gentiles are in. Not, not when, not we can, uh, now we can see what kind of message. <coughs> Sorry. What kind of a message that these two prophets of Revelation chapter 11 will preach when you clearly can see exactly uh, what they are going to do for the remnant of 144,000 predestinated received the seal of God. So when you read the scripture in the book he says now salvation is come into your house. This is the message I want to say to everyone who is listening. Now salvation is come to your house. It is the time of the wild tree, uh, wild olive branch be crafted in. So salvation is come to your house. Please do not stumble in darkness. Lose of your stubbornness. Your stiff neck headed. Just, just come out of the condition. Receive or be humble. Repent again. Receive the message again. Be born again, again. It is this hour, it is this time. The call of a knock of the message of Christ. His voice is knocking to your heart. To say salvation is come into you. Salvation is come into your house. Salvation is come into your life, into your heart now. Take it, brother, sister. Believe it. The Lord is giving it to you. Because our time, our time is up. God must bring in now the original branch, the natural branch of the tree. He must bind it. He has a promise to heal it, to bind it, and to bring it back again. But you and I has time now during the dispensation of grace. We don't know when it will end. But I tell you, it is soon. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your people listen to your word today. Help them, Lord God, our dear Heavenly Father, just quicken their hearts to this message so that they can remember that they were they've been purged from their old sin. So that we can remember, Lord, and realize, come to, to a true awakening, to wake up to reality, where the Lord is calling us out. And Father, of the blindness of Laodicea, so that we can open our hearts and the doors of the church to him today, so that the bride's heart is turned into, into the true original Pentecostal faith. So that Lord, 
we can be able to please you and be able to meet you. We give our lives today, Lord. Help your people. Restore them, Lord, to truth. Restore them, Lord, to you. We ask this message, Lord. And we surrender our lives today. We ask you to be merciful to us. And help our unbelief. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.